Okay guys, so it's the next day and I have managed to put it up. Now, it's not as high as I would like, but it should still work okay. I'd probably say about 10 feet off the ground, I would imagine. I had to drop the antenna that was over there, uh, which is my wire antenna. And obviously I've taken off the dish off of here, just so it was easier to get access to this pole that's cemented in the ground. And we've got the kind of cheap TV rotator and there's the hex beam up there. It's uh, I really like the look of it, you know. I think it's a really awesome looking antenna. It's definitely one of the larger antennas that I've had before. And I believe it's a CQ Worldwide contest as well this weekend. So we'll maybe see if we can give some points away. At the end of the day, I think it's just a case of plugging it into the radio and, uh, and literally just seeing if it's working. I think that's the best thing to do. So let's head inside and see if we can make some contacts. It is a Saturday afternoon, so hopefully the uh, contest will be in full swing and we'll be able to get some contacts. Now, before we take a look at the SWR plot for each of the supported bands, I wanted to mention about the possible use of an RF choke mounted around this point here. Now, I didn't install one, but I have seen some other users install an RF choke at this point which helps eliminate common node current, which in turn should dole down any RF floating around in the shack. So here's an SWR plot from three megahertz to 70 megahertz. Now I know this antenna is only for 20 to six meters, but I wanted to see this anyhow and thought I would share it with you. Now this is the plot for 20 meters, which is 14 megahertz, and the dip is around 14.25 megahertz and has an SWR of less than 1.4 across all of the phone SSB portion of the 20 meter band. 17 meters, the dip is a little high. In fact, it's out of band, but the whole of the 17 meter band is 1.7 or less anyway. However, this could be related to a couple of factors, and that could be because the antenna is quite low to the ground. And also too, it's very close to my conservatory, which I presume has a metal frame. Now adjusting the elements for each band is super simple because each one is folded back anyway, but I won't make any changes to the elements until the antenna is in its forever location, if you know what I mean. Now 15 meters looks good, less than 1.6 across the entire band, and 12 meters also looks pretty good, that's 1.5 or less across the entire band. Now 10 meters looks fantastic, that's 1.2 or less across the entire 10 meter band, and that's the CW, SSB and FM portions of the band. That's nearly two megahertz bandwidth. Now six meters shows as 1.6 or lower across the whole band, so still very usable. Now I'm not sure if I'll get any contacts on six meters because well, the band's just not open at the moment and there's not many six meter users in my area. Now before hooking it up to my radio and after checking the SWR, now I'll connect up my SDR receiver. And wow, look at this. This is 10 meters during a Saturday afternoon during the CQ Worldwide contest. Your 5916. Your 5905. 5Q7, thank you. United Zulu 7, Canada contest. Okay, so we do have great band conditions. We have CQ Worldwide event on as well. And we have a great antenna. So this is going to be fun. Right, let's hook up the radio and make some contacts. Now for this, I'll be using my Yaesu FT710. And while the 710 is not really a contest radio, it does still hold its own. CQ Fox, CQ, Charlie Fox 3 Alpha, Charlie Fox 3 Alpha. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. M0 DQW, you're 5904. Yeah, 5914. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, Charlie Fox 3 Alpha. CQ Contest K3 Lima Radio, Kilowatt 3 Lima Radio. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. M0 DQW 595. Yeah, 5914, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. K3 London Radio. Thank you, Contest. Victor Alpha 2, Whiskey Alpha. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero? Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, your 5905. Yeah, 5914, thanks very much. Victor Alpha 2, Whiskey Alpha, Contest. Thank you, Victor Echo 3 Golf. M0DQW. Mike Zero again. 
Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, 5914. Thank you. Roger, Kilo 3, Lima Radio. M0 DQW. M0 DQW, 595. Yeah, 5914. Thank you. QRZ. Who's the zero? Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, 595. Yeah, 5914. Thank you. Thank you. Kilo Charlie 1, X ray, X ray. Thank you, contest. Thank you, contest. Whiskey 4 Radio Mike, Whiskey 4 Radio Mexico. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey here, 595. Yeah, 5914. Thank you. Thank you. Whiskey 4 Radio Mike. Good November. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, 59.5. Yep, 5914. Thank you. Thanks, Alpha Alpha 1, Oscar November. Thank you. Good luck. QRZ Sierra 570, Charlie Sierra Tango. Contest. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Um, I think I know your call sign, probably through YouTube. You're 5915. <laughs> Thank you very much. 5914. 73. Good luck. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, 5915. Yeah, 5914. Thank you. USL Hotel Germany, 7 Tango. Now, I went on to make many, many more contacts, and I really do think I chose a great week to build this antenna. In fact, I don't think it could have been any better. Now, these are just a few entries from my logbook that I actually logged. However, there is a slight drawback, and that's when trying to work these exotic call signs on the other side of the world, you can guarantee there is someone running two kilowatts with a full-size Yagi pointing directly at them. So little chance for me and my 100 watts to get through. However, keeping an eye on the cluster really did help. So what did I think of the hex beam offering from AWK antennas? Well, considering I've never used or built a hex beam before, it became apparent that instructions were not actually needed as Paul had marked out all the parts and drilled the holes needed for the spreaders and the elements, etc. Now, as long as you understand how the driven elements are arranged, laying out those element wires was pretty easy. Now, overall, I found it to be a really fun project and with great results in both reception and transmit range. So I come to the conclusion, I absolutely love the hex beam. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to do an A and B comparison with my N-fed wire antenna, but I'm pretty sure the hex beam would have outperformed it on these higher bands anyway. Now, with regards to purchasing this hex beam and price, I would recommend sending Paul an email via his website, which I'll link below in the video description. Now, obviously, these kits may take some time to prepare, so this will give Paul an idea of the demand. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about the hex beam. And also let me know if you own one as well. Until the next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.